What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the front end and back end of a CRUD application. We'll set up React, Node, and Express in this video. And we'll make sure the client side and server side can communicate with each other. And in a follow-up video, we'll connect a database so we can store and retrieve our data. So the way we're going to set this up is we'll make a directory or folder, which will be our project. Then we'll put two folders inside of our project. One folder will be a React project. That'll be our front end, and we'll call that folder client. Then we'll create another folder called server. This will be a node and express backend where we write our server side code and interact with our database. For the database, we'll use MySQL, but more on that later. So in the terminal here, we'll do make directory music talk be the name of the app. And we can change directory into music talk. And we can do npx create react app. We'll call it client. Awesome. So that created our React app. And then we will also make a folder called server. By the way, I have a video where I go over the basic terminal commands, if that's something that you need or would like to check out. And we'll change directory into our server folder. And then we'll run npm init to create a node application and create a package.json file where our dependencies will live. So any packages we add to our node application will be added to the package.json file. It'll ask you a series of questions. A lot of people just hit enter through all of it. Package name, sure. Version, sure. Description, sure. Entry point index.js, sure. Enter, enter. Is this okay? Yes, enter one last time. Beautiful. So that creates our package.json file. Change directory back up. And then open up the code editor. Bring that in screen here. So this is our project. And then we have the client and the server. And that's our package.json. And now we'll install Express in our Node app. Express is a backend Node framework for creating APIs, basically for creating a server and ways to communicate with your server. I'll change the directory back into the server. And I'll run npm install Express. You don't have to add the dash dash save nowadays but it won't hurt if you do add it. If we look at our package.json, we see Express has been added. And by the way, this client was our React app that we made. So in our server, we can now create a index.js. Remember when we hit enter through our package.json creation, we said the entry point was index.js. So in this file, we can create a const called express and require express. Then we do a const called app and then call the express function. And then we can go ahead and console.log the app and get a look at the different methods that come with Express. So I'll save that, go to my server here, my server folder in the terminal, and I'll run node index.js. And we see all these different methods that come with the Express app. You'll see different HTTP verbs like the uh, get, delete, you'll see connect. We'll use that to connect to our database later. And we have this listen method. 
and we can call the listen method and give it a port to listen to and that will start our server and have it listen for requests that come in. So we'll do an app.listen and we'll listen on port 8080. And then a callback function, we'll just say console.log server listening on port 8080. Save that. And now if we run this again, node index.js, we see server is listening on port 8080, so that worked. If we go to browser here, and we can go to localhost, which is basically our machine, and then the port 8080 of our machine. And this looks like it's working correctly. It says cannot get slash because we do not have a path on our server for slash. So let's go ahead and make that real quick. You app.get and then just the slash route, just like the home page. And then we get this request and response with a callback function. And so then we can access the request that's coming to our server or the response that we want to send back to the client. And so here we'll just do response, and there's different methods for the response or the request. In this response, we'll do a response.send, and we'll just send a string. And save that. And then whenever you make changes in your index.js file, you're going to have to restart your server so control C to stop the server and then you can hit up to go back to your previous command and we'll run node index.js again hit enter and it's listening on that port again so that it started back up we will refresh this and there we go and now we can go to our client side on the react application and install Axios and then use that to make requests to our backend and then we can start sending data from our back end to our front end. So we'll get rid of these kind of server side files for now. Get into our client and source. Get rid of some of these extra ones, these extra files that we won't need. Get rid of this. The import of the logo, don't need that. Okay, so we want to install Axios. I'll do control backtick to open up this terminal so we can keep the server running on the other terminal. I'll change directory into client, which is our React app. I'll do npm install Axios. 100 million packages, bunch of high vulnerabilities. Go ahead and clear that. And now we can import Axios. We'll 
Let's create a button in here. Do an on click, which will call a function called API call. And then up here, we can create a function called API call. We'll do an axios.get, be a get request. And then we'll do that to HTTP colon slash slash localhost. And that 8080, that's where our server is. It'll be a dot then with a callback function. And for now, we'll just console log, make sure that it's working. Come to the terminal here, do npm run start. Let's start our React app. See an error for the report web vitals in index.js. Let me clear that import this as well. There we go. So now if we go to localhost 3000, our front end, we see our button for make API call, open up the console with option command J. Now click this make API call, and we get an error. So this is the infamous cores policy issue, cross origin resource sharing, I think it is. But basically, it's an issue with APIs and not giving resources to other APIs unless it's configured properly. And luckily, there is a cores package that makes this very easy that we can add to our server in our Express app. So I'll shut this down once again with Control C and run our server. So I'll do npm install cores, the name of the package. So if we just search npm cores, we just installed it. So all you have to do is require cores, save that to a constant, and then app.use and call that. So let's see, back in our server, go to index.js. We'll do a const cores equals require cores. We'll do app.use and call the cores function. Save that. Go back to our server, restart that since we made a change. I'm going to refresh this to clear the console, and we'll try this again. And there we go. And so that is working correctly. And if you want to just access the data from our server, like this string or JSON object, you can go get rid of this console.log. We'll say data in here. And actually, I'll just console.log that just to show you that we are accessing that data. So now if I call this again, we get our data object. And there we go. So now we've set up the front end and the back end, and we've made sure that they're able to communicate with each other. And then in the next video, we can set up a database
and connect that database to our server and our front end as well. I'll also add Tailwind and I'll be bringing in Redux Toolkit as we build out the front end. We'll build out the routes on the server, build out the data schemas, all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned and thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Check it, check it.